Testing, testing, one, two, three.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. <coughs> and with your spirit. Hey, Patrick. <coughs> the church gathered on that first Pentecost, and the Spirit took hold of them. It's Jesus' feast, but it's also our feast. And so I welcome all of you, and especially I want to welcome Father Russ Harbaugh. Father Russ and I are classmates, both born in July. He's three weeks older than me, all right? <laughs> and then also, where is Father Dexter? He's back in the back, and I invited Father Dexter to be here. He's by the baptismal font. Let's welcome yeah. Father Dexter. Yeah. As we gather, let's all turn to the baptismal font, remembering our consecration in the Spirit, and the gifts of the Spirit are always available to us, especially as we celebrate this Pentecost. Let us pray. O oh God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayer. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation, and the still greater work of our redemption. Graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water, the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water, this Pentecost, be a memorial of the baptism we have all received and grant that we may share in the joy of our sisters and brothers who at Easter have received their baptism. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. 
table of the heavenly kingdom. Amen. Amen. And now in song, let us <laughs> proclaim our glory to God.
O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast, sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. For out we pray the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Grant this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because all heard them speaking in their own languages. Amazed and astonished, they said, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language. Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, for Greek Gia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome both Jews and converts, Christians and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, 
From the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities. But there is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free. And we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
hearts of your great ones and kindle in them the fire of your love. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It was evening of that first Easter Sunday. The doors were locked. And Jesus appeared in the upper room before the disciples who had all abandoned him at his moment of crisis. Shalom. He said to them, peace. He said twice. And then the risen Jesus looked out over them. And as this Pentecost, likewise, he looks over us and says, as the Father has sent me, so now I send you. And then Jesus breathed on them. Receive the Holy Spirit. Angelica, Tom, you really did the microphone system well. We can hear that breath of the Spirit running through all as a worship. Five years ago, a small group of parishioners, no more than a handful, came up to me and and said that they wanted to start a St. Vincent de Paul Society at the parish that reached out to people in the neighborhood who had rental problems or MLGW bills that were outstanding, and they would go in twos to meet with each household. We already had an outreach ministry. I didn't stop it, but I went in favor of it. And yet, that ministry flowered and has been going on. And it shows signs of the Spirit working through that small handful that have become many. Then, friends, three years ago when the COVID really hit hard and everything pretty well closed down. Two parishioners came up and they suggested 
why don't we do a mobile food pantry right in our parking lot? St. Patrick's had never done that before. 26 times the mobile food pantry has gathered with as many as 500 cars winding up this neighborhood and giving over those 26 times to 40,000 people food that will last for a week. Ah, the spirit erupted with two people. And that ministry still continues. Then there are two parishioners. And they came and they said, we want to start a Tanzania medical ministry. There's a clinic in Tanzania and we want to show our support. Now, there's different ways that there are needs here. And I didn't say much, but I didn't think it would go. But then those two begin to multiply. And there's a good number of people and that clinic in Tanzania is much stronger because of the support given by St. Patrick's all. Come Holy Spirit. That spirit was working in those two. Then, at one point in our story of St. Patrick's, we were at a time of making a decision that would affect our future. And I invited three parishioners, all of them women of insight, to meet with me. And the four of us would, would listen, would pray, and then come to a decision of what we would do that would very much influence the parish. After many hours of prayer and listening, we come to our decision. And it was three to one. The three women all discerned a certain approach to take and I another direction. I told them that we're gonna go ahead and follow the way that I had chosen. And then one of the women spoke up on behalf of the three, passionately but charitably said, questioning, why did you ask us to be part of the process if you're not going to take our discernment seriously? <laughs> I finally listened. We followed their direction and sometimes later, we can see that it was a decision spirit led and clearly what the Holy Spirit wanted for this parish. St. Patrick's, we only need to have God open our eyes to see the varied ways that the spirit works among us and that the Spirit comes and leads us in new directions as a parish. And I have to tell you that I'm very grateful. 49 years ordained a priest. That as I was going to the finish line, the risen Jesus planted me here at St. Patrick's because then I could learn in fresh ways how the spirit works in ways that I didn't anticipate. Oh, it's a good learning for me. It's a good learning always for us. But St. Patrick's, Pentecost is Jesus' feast. It's also 
our feast. And Pentecost is never neat. Margaret Callicott read the first reading from the Acts of the Apostle, that pivotal Sunday in Jerusalem, those diverse languages. And at the end of the day, it says that 3,000 were baptized. But I tell you, if that first Pentecost, a Gentile of pagan background came up to one of the ushers and said, you know, I'd like to be part of this too. And the usher would strongly lead that person to the Beale Street of Jerusalem. No, it wasn't for those of Jewish background. I mean, it was of those of Jewish background. It wasn't of those of pagan background. None of the 3,000. But St. Patrick's, about 15 years later, that upstart St. Paul began to baptize Gentiles of pagan background, not making them to become Jewish first. No, in the saving waters of baptism, making them and was spirit led, but it caused quite a rift. Oh, yes. Pentecost is never neat. Pentecost always shakes up, especially the status quo. So this Sunday, well, I can look back, and I am so grateful that for these six years, we have gathered to celebrate the Eucharist together, to be formed by God's word to share in the Lord's flesh and blood and to be joined together in our sacred calling. St. Patrick's, I'm especially grateful to be with all of you this Pentecost Sunday. Very grateful. And as I do so, I trust that as we give joyful praise and thanksgiving, that the Spirit is going to lead all of us in the direction that perhaps we don't see right now, but that we can trust that the risen Jesus is going to continue to breathe upon us. About 10 days ago, I received a gift from a parishioner. It's a t-shirt right over there next to Dick and Eugene. I'm going to wear it during our picnic lunch. It's not the required red, but I didn't care. It's a t-shirt, and it has the words of Pope Francis. Ask Jesus what he wants and have courage. St. Patrick's, it's wonderful. We're all together this Pentecost Sunday. Let's ask the risen Jesus what he wants and trusting that he will give us courage. We live it out. And together, St. Patrick's, let us shout out, come, Holy Spirit. Now that we're standing together, 
let's profess our, our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On that first Pentecost, in varied languages, people gave praise to God. Now, let us offer up our petitions. Our response today is, come Holy Spirit. Seigneur, tu as envoyé à nous tout temps sans esprit, par ton fil bien ami Jésus, pour habiter et travailler au dedans de nous et à travers nous. Aidez-nous, nous te prions, de vivre notre vie selon ta sainte volonté pour nos seulement dans cette communauté des faits, mais aussi à de la l'une d'amour fraternelle et de paix. Nous te prions, au oh Seigneur. We pray to you, O oh Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Para los inmigrantes, refugiados y todos los demás extraños en medio de nosotros, para que puedan encontrar la fuerza en nuestra preocupación por la justicia y la calidad de nuestro amor. Oramos por ti, Señor. We pray to you, O Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Kartave, Angel de Strustine, Bahamani Kianum, Paripali Kianum. We pray to you, O Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Senhor, abençoai pela graça do Espírito Santo os caminhos de todos aqueles que, longe de seus lares, encontram conforto, felicidade e paz na sua palavra. We pray to you, O Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Anh em hãy nhận lấy Chúa Thánh Thần. Chúng ta cùng cầu xin Chúa cho mỗi người trong chúng ta biết mở rộng tâm hồn đón nhận những tác động âm thầm của Chúa Thánh Thần. Nhờ đó, đời sống chỗ sinh nhiều hoa trái thiên liêng là lòng bác ái, hoa bình an nhẫn nại hiền hòa và nhân hậu we praise to the lord come holy spirit selamat pa sa inyo dios sa kalaob looban ng maaming mga para at ministro itakta ang kanilang mga kaluluwa sa poy na may pagmamahal sa iyong mga tao at huminga ng banal na espiritu sa atya 
atsa pa mamagitan ninal sal banal na Pentecostes na ito. Palakasin po, ninyo si Father Dexter Nobela Franca sa pagsisimula niya ng kanyang ministerio sa St. Patrick. At sana po ay ay pagpailaian si Father Val Handworker sa pagsisimula ng kanyang ministerio kasasama ang kanyang mana, mga kapatid na Come, Holy Spirit. Hear, O oh God, the longings of your church, voiced to you in varied languages, but all of us with one heart. Deepen that spirit among us now, that we might be further energized in your son's work. Lead us in thanksgiving as we gather at your table. And transformed by these mysteries, send us forth in his mission with courage and love. Grant this to Christ the Lord.
As the incense rises to the heavens, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of God's holy church. Grant, we pray, O God, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your Easter mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to our peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, ever, ever, God of hosts, glory, You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved son, Jesus the Christ, in whom we have become your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach us, approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed to us for our sake, to the wood of the cross. Yet, before he stretched out his arms between heaven and earth in the everlasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things to himself, through his blood to be shed on the cross, to drink the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles the human race to you. Look kindly, most compassionate God, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake the one bread and the one cup, they may be gathered into the one body of Christ, healed of every division. Please to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand saints among the saints in the halls of heaven with the blessed Mother of God and the blessed apostles, St. Patrick, and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. One high priest leads us in prayer of thanksgiving 
and is about to feed us. Now, all of us, scattered all throughout here, let's join hands and let's pray in song in the very words that Jesus has taught us. Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Is there peace? Peace. <laughs> Yeah, I'm it. We're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Have a great day. Oh, thank you. Peace, John. Peace, Ronnie. Peace. Oh, I love you. Oh, yeah. Peace. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace, Peace be with you. It's on tape. <laughs> Yes. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter to my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon the church may retain all its force and that this spiritual food and drink may gain her abundance of eternal redemption. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, before we go to the second part of the day, I want to acknowledge all those who, who work so hard to make our liturgy together, particularly Angelica Rindek, our music director, together with the choir. And our pastor associate, Shannon Curtis, who organized so much. And I want to acknowledge someone who wasn't supposed to be here. Parishioner Kirk Whalem was supposed to be in Nigeria, but he wanted to be here at his parish with Ruby for uh, Pentecost. Now, after Mass, right after Mass, we're having a picnic luncheon. It's going to be in the Outreach Center uh, uh, at the very end. And uh, Sophie is going to be here with the cart that's decorated appropriately uh, if you need a ride. Also, there are going to be tables all along the walkway and in the uh, annex lobby. So we have a lot of food and the time for us to be together. So I want to invite you to be part of that as well. And again, to thank all those who put a lot of time in making that happen. And now before the final blessing, I want to be clear about one thing to you. I love you. We love you. And I, and I will keep you in prayer and really excited about the future of the parish. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks be to God. I'm not